Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome to Motivation to Invest. Today we're going to dive into a really interesting stock, a stock I'm really excited about, and that is Mercado Libre, the Amazon of South America. This is a leader in e-commerce in South America and of course has benefited hugely from the whole global pandemic. So I'm going to dive into this stock, all the research I've done on this company i'm going to dive into my deep dive valuation model and give you guys my buy point for where i think the fair value of this stock is so this is going to be a really special video guys and you're not going to want to miss this one you're going to want to watch this video all the way till the end so before we get right into it if you're new around here feel free to join the investing family by hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on. On this channel, we focus on deep dive stock analysis of the best stocks in terms of value and growth stocks on this channel as long-term investments. And if you do appreciate the research which has gone into this video and all the time it's taken to compile this video together, then feel free to give this video an early thumbs up that helps out tremendously with the channel. And if you guys do actually want to know in real time exactly which stocks I'm personally buying, selling, and access my entire portfolio, and join a thriving community of some of the finest people on the internet, and access all my stock research, all my buy points and fair valuations for many different stocks in my portfolio, then feel free to check out that first link in the description below for the VIP membership group. And with that being said, let's dive in. Okay, so diving in straight away. So this is Mercado Libre here. These guys operate in Argentina, Brazil and Mexico with Brazil being their largest market, followed by Argentina and then Mexico. But they're also the market leader in Chile and Colombia, where they're gaining market share. So it's basically an e-commerce website, very similar to Amazon. They have third-party sellers, but they also have sales directly through the platform, I believe. So if we dive into the share price, now this stock, I actually did mention this as part of a top three or top five list back in early 2020. But unfortunately, during that time, I hadn't really dived into it deeply like I have in this video because if I did I would have loaded up the truck then but I did mention it in a previous video but around this point here around May 2020 since then this stock has been on an absolute rampage so the stock is up 130 percent but this is where I see there could be a potential opportunity now so there's been a major pullback now the stock was down 26 percent market cap 79 billion dollars now to put that into perspective for you guys Amazon, the global, obviously, e-commerce giant, has a market cap of over $1 trillion, I believe around $1.5 trillion. So that's Amazon, the, the absolute beast. Why make trillions when we could make billions? But of course, this company doesn't have Amazon's cloud computing business, but they are working on a digital payments platform, which is also extremely popular. And I'm going to get into that in this video also a little bit later. So let's just dive into a few metrics from 2020, because of course, this company experienced a fantastic year, as did many other e-commerce companies such as Etsy, which I covered previously on this channel and I invested into myself, which was up around 200%. Then we, of course, we have Amazon and many, many more players. So unique active users grew by 71.3% year over year, reaching 74 million. Items sold, so gross merchandise volume, increased over 109%. So this is a high growth stock. Revenues for the fourth quarter were 1.3 billion, a year over year increase of, wait for it guys, 96.9%. So that's fantastic growth. Generally, I say a growth stock is one which is growing at least 20% per year. This company grew in 2020 at 96%, which is fantastic. Now, I'm not expecting that growth moving forward, but even um, if we dive into Stockopedia here, um, there's a 25% discount link if you guys want to check out this platform for stock analysis. Um, if we dive into the previous growth this company has over the past three years, they've averaged around 48% growth. So even prior to the whole pandemic, this company was growing pretty fast. Now, the company was unprofitable for a number of years, like many e-commerce players. However, in 2021, they are expected to become profitable. So that is quite good to see for this company. They're gaining a lot of size. They're scaling up massively. They're investing for growth in a really hard to penetrate market. And that is South America. Balance sheet is strong. Also, current ratio 1.47. That's about right. That's the short term assets to liabilities. 
Um, they've also got around 3 billion in cash on the balance sheet at the moment. Now, if I show you this company's um, breakdown of where they are dominant, so as you can see here, number one in Colombia, number one in Brazil, number one in Mexico, above Amazon. In Chile, they're also the market leader. Argentina, they're also the market leader. So I love to invest into market leaders. If you guys are in the VIP group, you would have watched my investment strategy video and see my presentation where I taught you through my qualitative and quantitative analysis for stocks and the companies which are the market leader are the ones that I wish to invest into. Be clear leader in all five countries which together account for a combined 86% of the e-commerce market in Latin America. But here's the kicker, guys. So the Latin American e-commerce market is not as developed as it is in the West, in the US, in internationally, in Europe, and many other places. It's just not as developed, mainly due to a few factors. One is internet penetration. One is trust of the government and the political system. For example, if I dive into this statistic here, e-commerce sales represented a meager 4.4% of all retail sales in Latin America. Now, this is only expected to reach 6.6% in 2022. Now, if I compare that to the US, e-commerce sales in the US are expected to reach 15.5% of retail sales in 2022. So this basically means for Mercado Libre, they have a lot more runway in terms of growth for this company in the e-commerce sector. But that's not the only sector this company is in. They're also in the digital payment sector, which of course is gaining massive popularity. So according to the 2020 World Pay Global Payments Report, Latin America ranked lower than any other region in the world in terms of digital mobile wallet penetration. Now, digital mobile wallet payments represented just 2% of in-store spend and 14% of online spend. And cash was still the most common form of payment in stores at 58% of spending, where credit cards were the most common form of payment online at 44% of spending. Now, this may actually sound bad, but this is actually a great thing for Mercado Libre because they can actually penetrate this market massively and they have a massive runway ahead for growth in both the e-commerce and the digital payment sector. I don't, I don't, I don't around the Mexican head. Now, if I dive into this market share chart for the digital payment sector, currently Mercado Paygo, which is the payments platform that Mercado uses, the digital payments, they have a 16% market share. So the market leader in Argentina, they're second in Brazil and they're third in Mexico. So, Me so Mexico is quite a segmented market. You've got Samsung Pay. I didn't even know Samsung did payments at 6.8% of the market. You've got PayPal 1.9%. But Mercado Pago is very close to PayPal. So if we combine that with the growing internet penetration in South America, then this could be a major potential opportunity for Mercado Libre. And they seem to be taking full advantage. So if I dive into the statistic here for internet penetration, so the United States has a population of 331 million, of which 284 million, 86% of the US population are internet users. Now, if we compare that to Latin America, only 38% of the population are online buyers. So it's a real difference. It's a real disparity. And basically the way I personally think about Latin America in terms of its e-commerce and digital payments, imagine where we are now in, let's say, North America or Europe, but 10 years ago with regards to e-commerce and digital payments, or maybe five, 10 years ago, then that's where Latin America is now. So if you could get in a time machine, you could go back five to 10 years and you can invest into a company. Of course, what company would you invest into? Amazon, all the other e-commerce players, that's what you'd be investing into. Now, another great thing with this company, it's, this is definitely one of my favorite companies I've ever done a full research analysis on, is they have incredible backing. So if I dive into the top shareholders of the company, we have Bailey Gifford & Co., who has 9.53% of the company. So Bailey Gifford was one of the original Tesla bulls. They were one of the original Tesla investors. They're a great investment firm which invests in disruptive and innovative technology companies. You can think of them like the UK version of ARK Invest, but in many ways they're actually better than ARK Invest because they've been generating great returns for a very long period of time, whereas ARK Invest seemed to have just popped up in 2020, producing these incredible returns. So I like to see companies which are founder-led and insiders do have shares in the business. So 
If we dive in here, we can see individual insiders have 0.3% of the shares. I would like to see a little bit more than that, but still it's not too bad. If we go down here, we can see the co-founder of the company, Marcus Galperin. I believe there are three founders to this company I actually researched. One of them went Stanford, I believe. The other one, Wharton. So they're very sort of well-educated South American people. They've seen this opportunity in the South American market in the late 90s. There were 80 competitors in this space. And then the dot-com bubble bust. And many of those competitors went bankrupt. And Mercado Libre managed to actually keep chugging along and gain market share over time. So, I, this, so the management team's pretty switched on. Um, if we dive into my valuation model, I've plugged in all the numbers for you guys here. Um, revenue growth, I've predicted for next year. I've been quite conservative. I've said 45%. I'm not predicting the same growth they've had in 2020 with everything locked down in 2021. So I'm being conservative there. According to this discounted cash flow calculation, which basically looks at the amount of cash which could be generated in this business over the next 10 years and discounts that back to today's fair value, then that is $1,200 per share. Now, the stock has had a major pullback. It's currently trading at $1,500 per share. So at this point, you could say it's slightly overvalued still. Now, the price sales is 19, so that's not exactly cheap. You're paying 19 times the company's sales, which is higher than Amazon's price of sales. So before I get into whether this is actually a good buy right now, let's dive into a couple of risks with this company. The first risk I can see is this company's just hit profitability, well, just about to hit profitability. So that is a risk at the moment. The company's actually been spending more on sales, marketing, and I believe shipping subsidies. The second risk, and this one needs to be highlighted massively, is country risk. So the thing with um, South America, Latin America, is it's not as stable in many ways politically um, in terms of getting business and many other areas. In terms of the currencies, it's just there's so many risks with, with South America, Latin America and emerging markets. And that is a risk you guys need to be aware of. If there's a major political issue, even if it's not in the countries which this company operates in, then it still could have a knock-on effect on this country. For example, we had Venezuela and they had inflation and it was just crazy. However, this company is operating in some of the safest regions. We've got Argentina, we've got Brazil, we've got Mexico, even Chile is a very stable place. And the third risk I can see is competition. So Amazon is not the type of company which does give up and they will keep trying and trying and trying to penetrate that South American and Latin American market. So that's something we need to be aware of. Amazon won't give up. All these other players, these competitors won't give up. And the digital payment space, which this company is trying to really, which this company is trying to really excel in, is also, I'd say, probably the most competitive space in the entire world right now. We've got so many companies in the digital payment space. We've got Square, we've got PayPal, and now we've got Mercado Libre with their Mercado Pay system. So we've got so many different companies in this space, and I can see that as being extremely, extremely competitive. So that's the conservative estimate, $1,200. Um, if you're real growth investing, you're happy to hold this company for the long term, then you could potentially open a small position at $1,500 per share. Hold that. And I think this company could at least 2x, 2 to 3x in the next few years easily, easily. Now, I'm not saying this company won't be volatile. If there's a major political issue in South America, then this company will be volatile and will experience a downturn, I believe. However, I also believe that will present a buying opportunity. So if that does happen in South America, I'll assess this company. If the fundamentals haven't been affected, I will load up the truck on Mercado Libre. So if you guys did find some value in this video, I'd really appreciate a big thumbs up that helps out tremendously with the channel. And if you guys do want to know in real time exactly which stocks I'm personally buying, selling in real time and access my entire portfolio and join a thriving community of some of the finest investors on the internet and get access to all these different stocks. So these stock valuation spreadsheets, I've actually done these for multiple different stocks. As you can see here, I've got a whole list of stocks which I've done these valuations for fair value. Um, so you can actually dive into these spreadsheets and you can check out the fair value of a stock. So then when it does decline to that level, you can check, of course, if the fundamentals haven't changed or if the company's just experiencing some bad news. And then you know when is a good buying point. And I've also got all the details about the company, dive valuation, which I don't see anyone really doing on YouTube these days. People just say buy, sell, and people seem to want to watch that. But I personally, I'm going to stick to my guns and I'm going to stick to 
valuation research and actually investing into great long-term opportunities so if you guys do like that feel free to check out that first link in the description below for the vip membership group and if you're in this game for the long term i'd be happy to have you on board and joining that investing family and with that being said thank you guys so much for watching you guys actually make this channel i do appreciate the support and i will continue to do videos like this if that's what you guys want so comment your thoughts below on videos like these on deep dive analysis qualitative and quantitative no bs no hype just diving into great investing opportunities to hopefully make you guys money in the future and actually become wealthy and become financially free which is ultimately everyone's goal to actually live a happy and successful life and i hope you guys have an incredible day and i'll see you all in my next video invest safe